Hi, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're here to continue our series on the HPE ProLiant DL360 Gen 9 server. In this video we're going to specifically focus on VMware. Let's get going. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by today. It's a little bit more about the HPE ProLiant DL360 Gen 9 server. Do us a favor, if you find anything that helps you in this video, click that like and smash that subscribe. All right, top in. Uh, this video is going to be specifically focused on VMware and specifically VMware ESXi. So let's start by putting up the compatible versions with the Gen 9 server. That's going to be 6.5, 6.7, and 7.0. That's as of today, and that's going to be all the different versions of them, all the way up to version 3 for each of them. Now, in the future, there might be something that is compatible, so do me a favor. If something pops out in the future that's later, drop a comment down below just to help out users down the line. But that is as of today when we're releasing this video. So what we're going to do in this video as a whole, if you look in our description section, we're going to drop an ISO file for you that will allow you to download the uh, most current version as of again today. Um, what you're going to do is put that onto a bootable USB drive and we're going to show you step-by-step -step instructions on exactly how to install this onto your ProLiant Gen 9. Let's get going. Hey, this is Ben with Cloud Ninjas and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to install VMware ESXi. In order to install VMware ESXi, you're going to need a bootable USB drive that has the VMware ISO mounted on it. We're going to go ahead and provide a link in the description below with that ISO file so you can go ahead and download it. It's going to be directly from VMware's website. And to create that bootable USB drive, you can use a program called Rufus. It is extremely easy to use. You just go ahead and select the USB drive within Rufus and then you upload the ISO file and then you can start that process of creating that bootable USB drive. You're also going to want to make sure that your system has at least 8 gigabytes worth of RAM and that you have a solid state drive or a hard disk drive that has 32 gigabytes or higher configured to a RAID. If you don't know how to set up RAID, we actually have a video previously in the series that will show you exactly how to do so. So if you're interested, we have a link in the description below so you can go ahead and check that out and then come back to this video. The last thing we want to make sure we do before getting started is to make sure that our system um, is set to UEFI boot mode. Once all of this has been completed, we can go ahead and start the installation process. So the first thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and plug in that bootable USB drive and then we can go ahead and power on our server. During post, we want to go ahead and press F11 so we can enter into the boot menu. Once we're inside a boot menu, we want to go ahead and select our bootable USB drive. So for us, ours is the one that says front USB 2. Now, depending on where you have plugged your USB drive into, um, it may say something a little bit different, um, but select the option that is representing the USB drive. Once you select your USB drive, it's going to automatically pull us into the VMware ESXi installation. It may take a few minutes for us to fully boot into this installation, so we're just going to go ahead and fast forward and then we'll go ahead and pick back up. So once everything is done loading, you'll be prompted with this dialog box here. It'll say welcome to VMware ESXi installation. The version that is displayed may be a little bit different depending on which version of VMware ESXi you're installing, but in this video we're doing 7.0.2. Once you're at this dialog box, we can go ahead and just press enter to continue. Next we'll be prompted with the end user license agreement. We can just go ahead and press F11 so we can accept and continue. Once you accept that, it's going to go ahead and scan for all of the available storage devices that are connected to your server. Once it's done scanning, it's going to show all the available storage devices. The one we're going to go ahead and select is going to be the device that we want to install VMware ESXi onto. As we can see here, we have this HP logical volume. Depending on how many drives you have installed into your server, you may actually see more options than what we have. So it's important to know which device you want to install VMware ESXi onto. Once you figure that out, you just want to select the device. And after doing so, it's going to ask you to select a keyboard layout. So we're going to go ahead and select US default. Next, we're going to be asked for a root password. This can be whatever you want it to be, but I recommend keeping password security standards in mind. And then once we've set our password, we will get a window right here that will confirm our install. It's going to have a warning at the bottom saying that the disk will be repartitioned. So if you have any data that is on that disk, it will be erased. 
So just be careful and make sure that this is the device that you want to install VMware onto. So we can just go ahead and press F11 so we can install. And doing so is going to start the VMware ESXi installation process. So we will have a progress bar right here. This can take several minutes. So we're gonna go ahead and fast forward until it is fully complete. Once the installation is complete, we'll be faced with this window right here. It says installation complete and that it has been successfully installed. We wanna go ahead and remove the installation media before rebooting. So we're just going to unplug our bootable USB drive. And once we've unplugged that USB drive, we can just go ahead and press enter and the server will automatically reboot. Once our server is rebooted, there's no need to press anything during post. It'll automatically boot us back into VMware. We're just gonna go ahead and fast forward this boot process. And then once it's fully booted back up, we'll go ahead and continue. Once VMware has fully booted up, you'll be faced with two IP addresses. One's going to be an IPv4 address, and then one is gonna be an IPv6 address. There's not really a whole lot to do from the server um, at this point. If you press F2, you can go to customize the system and change around some settings as well as view some logs. And then F12 will just shut down and restart VMware. But if you wanna start creating virtual machines, you want to go ahead and grab that IPv4 address and go ahead and enter that into a web browser. And then that will go ahead and take you to the VMware ESXi web interface. And it'll go ahead and ask you for a username and password. The username is going to be the word root and the password will be the password that we set during that installation. And once you've put that in, you will be logged in and you can go ahead and start creating virtual machines. If you enjoyed this video or found it useful, go ahead and leave a like. And if you have any questions, feel free to drop them down below in the comments below. If you're looking for any servers for your home lab or data center, we got a wide variety in stock. Servers ranging from HP to Dell to IBM to Cisco. Uh, we also got some super micro. If you got a specific build in mind, just go ahead and hit us up at sales at cloudninjas.com. That is sales at cloudninjas.com. Send over your desired configuration and we'll be more than happy to help you out. Take care guys, we'll see you in the next one.